Hello and welcome to uh, another World Values Day live conversation. Um, I'm Anna McAfee and I'm delighted to welcome Mark Eichner from Valued to Hi. talk about the magic of values and recruiting that inspires. How are you, Mark? I'm fine. Excellent. Thank you for um, thank you for um, agreeing to this because I know you've got some fabulous insight into this topic. Um, if for those that are joining us live, please do just pop um, any comments in the chat. Um, if you'd like to, any questions for Mark as well. If you are watching on replay, do also as well um, leave any questions or comments um, below, and we can get back to those at a um, at a suitable time. But Mark, please do. Um, I'm, I'm dying to um, ask you all about recruitment and values and how they fit together. But first of all, because World Values Day is coming up next week, we're very, very, very close to the day. I wanted to ask you about one of your values, uh, perhaps where it came from and also how you put it into practice. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like, I thought about this question a lot. Like, I talk about, about values a lot but it's not easy like to pick that one but w one thing that really stuck up, um, that, that is really important in my whole life you can see that there's a clear line and you go back in the in, in in my history and you can see one thing and that is the value of freedom and um, I am a strong believer that you know designing your life your own life in your way uh, acting upon your individuality is something that enriches your life by so much. And um, that's why this value is extremely important for me. Um, and with freedom, I mean both the freedom from external constraints, but also from internal constraints. And I, I, I grew up in a family which has a very strong women. <laughs> And um, when I look at my grandma, for instance, um, she she never accepted any patriarchal norms. She always followed her heart, and uh, she created the life that was, you know, fitting um, to her. And uh, there's a little anecdote about this. So if you picture this, so I'm from Germany, south of Germany, Bavaria. So next to the Alps region, you know, where people wear Dirndl and Lederhosen, <laughs> where the Sound Oktoberfest <laughs> is. Well, yeah, I'm exactly. <laughs> um, and um, so, so she she grew she she lived in a in a rather rural town with a low number of um, inhabitants, a couple of thousand. And um, so, sixty years ago, uh, when you would go in a in a shop, a regular shop, a regular store, um, then there was this kind of expectation for you that social norm somehow that when you entered, you had to buy something. So leaving that store without having bought something, then the shopkeeper would look at you like, you know, grumpy, a little bit passive aggressive and um, with some sort of hostility even. And um, so... I mean that makes no sense now nowadays, right? But it was the culture at that at point in time. And well, my grandma, she always went in and went out without buying anything if it was there was nothing of value for her. And um, so she just didn't care. She she always went her. She 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 always chose her direction and uh, went went for it. And no matter like you know. Um, someone else trying to oppose external constraints on her. And um, she, she, she always told us, um, Lass dir nichts bieten, which translates, well, not directly, and it's a nicer way of saying, uh, don't take any crap. Yeah. Um, which means, in other terms, in, in terms of, you know, don't let others dictate uh, external constraints so and this is what i am trying to do in my whole life so i try to not take any crap and i also um because i think it goes both ways i also try to protect others from taking any crap <laughs> um and um 
when when you when you live according to this then something very beautiful happens um so when you try to get rid of external and internal constraints of people then people are able to connect to you know their to their essence in a way um and to their potential so they can really you know they be, can start being honest with themselves and living according to who they are and when they live to who they are and then they are much more productive um they spread more happiness and joy in life and um yeah that's something that we i guess all want uh being more productive and being more happy at the same time and um yeah so this that's why freedom is a very important core value of mine um that we also use at valued in in our business very much um and uh yeah that's, that's what I'm wonderful <laughs> uh, um i the, your grandmother was very ahead of her time so that's a really wonderful story thank you for sharing that um that's super cool and i values do come from i think our family members parents grandparents i um I, I i do hear that a lot so that's really wonderful really wonderful to hear um and it it probably leads into my next question really around um i guess how you came to um to found valued um and 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 because and perhaps you could tell us a little bit about valued and the approach that you offer um for companies in terms mm -hmm. of helping make values-based hires um yeah let us know about valued and actually where that where the idea came from um mm -hmm. i know you've got a great story around that yeah so it, it, this is also like it's it starts way back it was not like you know the moment at the kitchen table and then the idea popped up no it, it was it was growing over time and it has been an important integral part of my professional experience as well so after university um i um i i went out and looked for a job and it was very difficult for me because most jobs just judging from the job descriptions and doing some research on the companies i there were very little that i felt drawn to um and um i felt like you know i want to do something really meaningful but somehow i, I could not see the meaning in, in in many of those vacancies and um so finally I, I found one and that was really really amazing um i worked i started to work at an investment firm as a strategy consultant in week three i already flew from germany to india to make an audit for the investors of two companies um the next week i went to the ne next um to do the same um and um it, it was like from a intellectual kind of work uh, from the skills that you need, uh, it was like perfect. It was like um, a lot of trust from minute one, um, a lot of, you know, um, this, you know, the possibility to shape things, to change things. Um, and it, it was from that aspect, like absolutely what I wanted to do. Um, but I somehow felt like, you know, I, it's so hard um even though i just worked 40 hours per week um i on the weekends i somehow i had to sleep <laughs> i started sleeping the whole day i couldn't do much and i was wondering why is that um and uh after a year um suddenly um the ceo came to me and said um i'm sorry um but i have to let you go because um i had a talk with my coach yesterday and um he said if i continue like this i'm gonna burn out that's why i'm closing the company and and there it became really clear for me that you know even though we did work that we both love to do there was some cultural issue like there was a pressure environment in there like something that did not fit to him and not to me as well and uh 
So yeah, I, I realized that, you know, it's it's you can do something that you actually like doing, but when the environment doesn't, you know, support it in a sustainable way, nurture your talents in a sustainable way, you can just cannot proceed, right? And I mean, many people have this uh, burnout is like, uh, <laughs> it's become a common topic. And um, yeah, so um, I looked for another job um, and basically found the same thing in in, in, in different clothes. Um, but yeah, it, it was the same thing. I And I, I burned out myself uh, after that and got really, really sick. Um, and um, so I had a lot of time to reflect on this, um, and um, I, I realized I I needed to found myself a company um, which which was aligned to who I am. And um, so I started a company with a friend of mine. Um, we we uh, consulted people on and companies on LinkedIn how to grow. We were one of the first uh, that had a LinkedIn masterclass that we sold. And um, we were growing pretty fast. So um, there were two months uh, where we had to hire five people. And um, I'm not a recruiter myself. Um, so I, I hired people before, but um, not as quickly and definitely not in a structured way. And um, so, um, with all the experience that I had from my, me looking for jobs and uh, selecting the, 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 the workplaces where I wanted to work, I felt it's very difficult because it is so um, that there's not a lot of information out there where you actually can make a, the, the choice um, because a lot of talk is about, you know, you know what you do there and what you should bring but it's not about like who you actually are, are and where do you actually want to go. So I neglected all the best practices that are there in recruiting. And I just asked me the question, how does talent marketing look like so that I myself would apply to our jobs? And my background is marketing. Um, and uh and some copywriting as well so i i just intuitively started writing the the job posts and we um we distributed them uh in all like some of the channels that are for free um i think we spent 20 euros on linkedin um but that was it and uh we got 40 to 80 applicants uh on each of those um, vacancies uh, within one week and um, all of those uh, were placed within like uh, one week to three weeks so um, all of the vacancies were placed quite quickly and so I thought okay um, because we, we did a lot of this with LinkedIn as well um, I just show uh, we had a, at the time like a weekly coaching session with our clients uh, where everyone could join and um I, I brought this and showed showed it to them uh what, what i did and just to get both some feedback and learn from it and um so um one of our clients was a headhunter and he said like you know, that sounds interesting um let's try that out with a client um so uh we we, we got a client like a, a fast growing startup backed by a major insurance firm in germany and um, we got um, four executive search assignments um, in different positions, sales, legal, uh, HR, systems, admin. And um, yeah, so I tried to replicate this process that I intuitively did now like uh, in, a, in a more, struct more structured form. Um, and, um, and yeah, we found that the... Um, we basically had the same experience there as well. Um, many, many people were applying and um, we compared it to data to a leading headhunting firm. And um, we saw that, you know, the, the jobs that we put out had a 2000% higher conversion rate. Um, and so 
that was quite successful and I realized, okay, I have something uh, here. Um, and yeah, this is basically how value started. So from that, um, I, I found that, you know, the key why this was working was the values part. So um, when you look at the how a candidate journey is usually, then it's like, Okay, you read something about the company, like when you actively search, you read something about the company uh, on the on, on the job description, there's what you need to do, uh, what you should bring, and then there are like a couple of benefits. Um, then you enter an interview, and usually it's also very much about, you know, that do your skills fit to the requirements uh, that they have? Um, and then only in the later stages, um, you maybe talk to the leadership team and then you talk more, you start talking about values. So that's at the end um, of the hiring process. And um, what we do is we bring values to the front. We communicate values first. And that has two major effects. So the first effect is that people get really, really inspired. Um, because they can see, okay, there's a company that believes in this. I believe in the same thing, so um, that might be a good fit. Um, and the, the second thing is because you make values a topic already from the start, um, there is some kind of passive um, p p passive uh, um, selection already going okay. on because... Um, People who don't believe in the same things that you believe, they will not apply. <laughs> you know, they already feel like, okay, that's not for me. You know, fast-paced environments um, where you know think change ha change is an e um, essential part of the company will not um, be attractive to someone who is looking uh, for, you know, more maybe a routine tasks or you know. Um, or more a laid back kind of atmosphere or slow atmosphere, for instance, just uh, one one instance. Um, and when you make values an integral part of the conversation already before the interview phase, then people are very happy to open up very quickly in the interviews because you have brought the the conversation from you know this kind of judgmental evaluative uh, state of uh to uh you know let's explore and let's connect kind of way and so that gives people the opportunity to be more open about who they are what they dream of how they want their lives to be uh, what they need to be productive and happy and they can communicate that much much uh, more early and honestly um and yeah, so um, the let's say the the probability that you find people with this kind of process that really fits to the culture and the company is much much higher. So that because you just have a much longer time to both evaluate if there's a match between the company and the candidate. Mm. That is really interesting because you're right. Traditional recruitment does put values sort of at the end of the hiring process it's whereas if it's at the forefront the success is most obviously much higher success rate would you say it's well it's on the one hand bringing in more people because it's just so much more motivating mm. like people mm, people look for i mean there's this identity theory right so People have a certain identity and they have a certain identity that they dream of being. And when your company can be a part that enables them to come to that dream identity that they want to have, then the motivation is going to be so, so high um, compared to when you, you know, just talk about you know benefits and money that uh, the company will offer and this is like how you can change your life this is not enough um you need to create a meaning for people i mean brands 
consumer brands are doing this since ages, right? Um, they Coca Cola is just creating meaning. No one would drink drink that <laughs> drink that um, at least not on the scale. Um, and and I mean with the recruiting, um, there are tries like. Uh, employer branding right like tackling this is is a try to do this but um it's like um this is very long-term kind of focus but you can all already elicit it like just with a, a job profile that is just uh communicating the values in a very efficient way mm -hmm. and so the biggest difference would you say with the traditional pro approach compared to the way you're approaching it is it putting values at the forefront at just the job advert stage but it's throughout the whole hiring process as well it's that... throughout so yep. um the more you can talk about like the better the matches in terms of values the more likely it is that um potential hire is going to stay for a long time right mm. um so the longer you can the more you extend the time to evaluate the values match um the, the let's say like the less risk you have that the person is going to run away uh mm. very quickly or that the person is not a fit of course there's not like it's not like the whole uh, holy um grail of um truth um I, I always think that there is no way um to like a hundred percent predict if this is going to be a match like i think there will never be um a technology or a method to do that because um yeah uh, we just need to see then in real life how things really really work and sometimes um people try to build a facade that then mm -hmm goes through but already when you have like a longer uh, evaluation period before you hire someone on the values level then you already can see if the facade has holes um so you, you have a, a higher probability of seeing that hmm. yeah and it i mean it makes the traditional job ad so much more interesting doesn't it <laughs> It's um they're very if you do spend a lot of time reading job ads which i know in my recruitment days i did they're all very much a cut and copy and paste and um you know there's not not many that look much different but leading with values i'm sure really does make that stand out yeah and the amazing thing is also that you can um you know you can think of it as when, when you think of a vacancy that is uh, in in a team then you can already think of it okay what kind of person do we need for exactly this position to complement the team? Um, and you can communicate these values that are needed just specifically for this kind of position. And um, this is also going to increase the productivity of the whole team, but also like, uh, then uh, that the person really fits um, to that particular team. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that, that's just something that appreciates the individuality of the person uh, that is applying and eventually be, maybe become uh, an employee, which is just an absolute value by itself, I feel. Absolutely, yeah. You mentioned earlier about um, you're getting a lot more finding with this approach to recruiting, you're getting a lot probably more applications. Do you find that it's unlocking like a whole new candidate pool of people that perhaps are passively looking? Um, is that is that what you're tending to find with the clients that you're working with? Um, so when you apply this approach, then sometimes we are like we are we are shaking our our heads and think like this CV that we have in our hands, this like this is so <laughs> can this be true? Like there there are some CVs that that are the absolute dream CVs um, that you usually don't see uh, that we have not seen before in the, in the usual um, application uh, recruiting um, processes. Um, so it, it wakes up 
or like it makes people apply that would not apply on the normal uh, in, the, in, in the normal way usually um we had a candidate that said you know i'm i'm happy with my current employer um but um somehow my application just happened <laughs> yeah um so you you i mean that's there's this record, typical that's a his dream <laughs> <laughs> so there's the the typical iceberg model that people are showing all the time you know you have that um market of the people that are actively looking for a job and then you have the ones that are somehow passively looking for a job like when, when something pops up right but they're not like going on step zone and, and put in like okay i'm looking for this and that job um and then there are people that even don't know that there might be something out there that is worth for them to uh you know to 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 uh to change their job and so with, with values driven hiring you you can uh attract the people that are also passively looking for a job and those that are not even knowing that they want to look for a job that's really interesting really interesting and i guess it's, it's down to standing out again isn't it looking at i guess values in recruitment sort of this year next year and beyond what would you say mark are the, are the trends that we need to look out for or what do you see coming mm. so we, we 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 have this kind of um tension between on the one hand side we we are adopting ai we are adopting a lot of automation we want to be more efficient and that is leading to more automation and more ai and at the same time people crave for that kind of humanness in companies they want to be seen as humans they want to feel heard they want to be feel respected and um so we need to bring these worlds together so that conserve the humanness or even nurture the humanness by adopting uh, AI. And so what we need to do is make the AI that we use, create the meaning that we want, um, that we want to provide as a company. So I think this is one of the major things that we are going to work in the next five to 10 years. Yeah, how interesting. Yeah, because we, we want the human approach, but we want the, the systems that AI can bring, but perhaps without, yeah, that's interesting. And how do you think that will, will that affect the recruiting process? Or do you think that's more an internal um, organizational thing? It's going to affect the recruiting process yeah. uh, by a lot, I guess. Um, and I mean, we, we just start to grasp, I mean, what's possible. And there's this what's technically possible is something different than what's what's actually valuable, right? Yeah. So and only with experimenting, we will find out when tech is valuable in certain situations and i mean for instance we, we just i just read something that was very interesting um i mean there's ai about uh you know in in in, in interviews um so to to grasp the um uh, the 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 cues the non-verbal cues and and make sense of that help to make sense of that and um, when recruiters who have like, you know, who are good in their job um, use that, it actually leads to uh, lower, um, like it, it needs to worse results than actually the, if they would do it without them. Yeah, wow. Because um, they start to get lazy. They think, okay, AI is going to do that anyway. So I'm just going to, you know... <laughs> <laughs> um, um just uh follow the what the ai is saying and and the results that it's giving me and just gonna follow that somehow blindly and um there's still a gap in between so um yeah that was just an interesting example for me um 
And so we need to really think about like in, in what areas do we adopt it? Um, and can it, you know, is it, is it good enough already or does it need more advancement in tech before we can adopt it? Like all of these questions that we need to answer, uh, that we, we are working on answering. It's fascinating, isn't it? And as I was listening to you there, I was thinking, and um, perhaps there's the point at which humans are always going to do it better, which is perhaps, as you say, the recruiters that are really good at what they do, um, perhaps need yeah. to stick to the human I think approach. also, I mean, what kind of technology you adopt as a company speaks very much about who you are as a company. Mm. It's again, what values you have as a company. So by choosing the technology, you communicate values. And this attracts a certain kind of a certain kind of people and um, repels other kind of people. Um, so also there you can you can <laughs> use that to, uh, to 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 help attract the right people uh, just by <laughs> you know selecting the tools. Um, that's also an interesting thought. Yeah, absolutely. That's fascinating. Well, Mark, thank you very much for this insight. It's been really wonderful to chat to you. Is there anything else um, you wanted to finish the conversation with, perhaps how people can connect with you? Um, um, yeah, if you want to connect with me, um, just uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, it's linkedin.com slash in slash Mark with C Eichner. Um, that's a little bit more difficult, but I guess you, you'll you also find uh, my profile in the uh, event, in the LinkedIn event, and uh, feel free to Fantastic. send me a connect request. I'd be happy Fantastic. to connect. Fantastic. Please, please do that. Mark has a really wonderful insight to share um, on um, on on the on the values and the the magic of values in in recruiting. Mark, thank you very much. Um, for those that um, are watching live or watching the replay, um, thank you again. Please leave any comments. Um, do connect with Mark. And um, we look forward to seeing many of your your posts um, and and various um, insight into your own values uh, on World Values Day. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks, Mark.